And yes, I'm going to say it. This is the only wine recipe you need to make a white wine or a red wine. It's perfection. All right, here we are. You guys have asked for this for a long time, and we finally got around to doing it. Wine video using fresh grapes. Look at all these grapes. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. How many pounds was it? 72. 72 pounds of grapes. And what are the two kinds we got? Chardonnay and Merlot. And remember, this whole video, you can use any kind of grapes. That's what I want to show you. We're going to go into a great detail for maybe some of those beginners that may not know where to start. Let's just get right into this video. I can't wait to show you. We're going to use this for some training and some educational purposes. So we're going to take it very slow and show you details of everything we're going to do to turn these into wine. Put your lips on mine. We don't gotta stay friends forever. We can cross and lie together. Found love, baby, never seen never. After all this time. Now I know a lot of you have made grape wine using my fruit wine. Now there's a couple slight differences that we're gonna do in this, so you don't want to miss that. This is what we're trying to get to. This is a white Zinfandel grape wine that we love. We made that one from juice, not from grapes. I wanted to do a Zinfandel because it's one of our favorites, but we already got some of that. Want to taste one? <gasps> <laughs> Wait, I'll get it. I don't know where that one went. Mm, they are so, so sweet, sweet. Mm. and fresh. You're not going to get a fresher wine. Let's stop rambling. We got a lot of picking to do. Anything else we want to say? Nope. I just can't wait to turn these into wine. Yes. <laughs> and this isn't even all of it. No. We got some in the freezer, which will help prepare these grapes a little better for winemaking. Make sure you're following us on Instagram to see behind the scenes and what's coming up next on this channel. So now you need a couple key ingredients to make wine out of grapes. You need sugar, you need bentonite, Camden tablets, acid blend, potassium sorbate, yeast nutrient, pectic enzyme, and you gotta have wine yeast. I love Red Star. And I'll go over each one of these as we use them and put them into our wine. And I have a whole separate video that describes each one of these. Some of these you won't need for certain kinds of wine. All right, besides some of the additives we already went over, you're gonna need some equipment. This isn't all of it, and some of this you don't need. You need at least a fermenting bucket, airlocks, a graduated cylinder in the back, which will help for smaller batches, measuring spoons. I always like my squirt bottles. The mesh bags are gonna work great for our grape wines. Some corks, star sand, some sanitizer. There's a racking cane. We're not gonna need that in this first video, but you'll see that as we progress. A stir paddle a funnel, a bottling nozzle, some carboys, and over there on the end is some wine bottles. All right, and this one is a must because you want to know where your ABV is and you want to know when your wine is ready to rack. A hydrometer. I got a whole video on this. Don't miss that and how to use it. Now remember, everything you see, I got links to in the description to buy this stuff. But here's also, you don't want to, you want to have a bottling drying rack. And then if you're going to stay in this hobby, I strongly suggest you get one of these professional corkers. It's going to make your job so much easier. Now, when you're making wine or any fruit wine, you want two pounds of sugar for every gallon. We're doing two, three gallon batches. So I want six pounds for one and six pounds for the other. So a total of 12 pounds, we're gonna make a simple syrup out of this. All right, so we got our sugar weighed out. Now we're just gonna fill our stock pot and put our 10 pound bag and then our additional two pounds that we weighed out. And then we're gonna get this dissolved on the stove by making a simple syrup. There's the other two. All right, now a lot of you have asked, how much water do you put in your sugar when you're dissolving it? 
We just want to cover it enough to get it dissolved. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to add water, no exact measurement. Remember, this is a double batch of sugar, three pounds of sugar for the one and three for the other. So let's get this on the stove. All right, we got our heat on. We're getting ready to stir this in. You want to keep stirring your sugar in this step. You don't want to bring your sugar to a boil because you don't want to burn it. So just keep your eye. If you start to see bubbling around the edge and it's crystal clear, you know you're done. I'll fast forward here so you can see what I mean. All right, hopefully you can see this. It's starting to bubble and we want to get this heat off. You don't want to boil this and it's starting to clear up just fine. So we'll shut the heat off and let this sit and cool to room temperature. That's all we're trying to do in this step. Okay, it's time to get some things sanitized. You want to get a good sanitizer. We love Star Sand. Again, linked in the description. I'm putting a half ounce in here and filling it up with two and a half gallons of warm water. So there we go. We're going to get that going and then we're going to get our equipment in. So we're gonna, for this first stage, we're gonna need some measuring cups. Two spoons comes in handy for our crushing our candy tablets. Here's our stir stick. Gotta make sure you're sanitizing a hydrometer. And our air locks, because we got two batches going today, we need two of these. And don't forget your mesh bags. Those are critical when you're making any kind of fruit wine. If you're making wine from juice, you don't need it. And then also throw this in a squirt bottle that once we're going to fill that up once we get this filled up to the proper level. Okay, so a tip and... Cut, oh. cut. Okay, so one tip is to freeze your fruit or your grapes before preparing them. It helps with breaking the skin, releasing the juices. Um, so what we're going to do is now we're going to prepare the grapes. We're going to remove the stems. You want to remove any bad fruit. You don't want to use any of that. Um, we have th two different kinds, um, three bags of each. We did four pound bags. We're going to use 12 pounds of fruit for each, for each batch. All right, you see how this squirt bottle comes in handy? You want to sanitize your bowls that you're going to put your fruit in. Anything that is going to touch these grapes, sanitize it. All right, let's get our grapes in one of these bowls so we can go through them a little easier. There, she's got the, what flavor you got? Merlot. Merlot, and mine are the Chardonnay. These are pretty tall. I think that'll work. It smells like grapes in here, but you're going to see. We're just going to fine go through these a little bit, and you want to pick out some of the bad. You can see some bad right here. We don't want any of that. You just want your green or the fresh purple, and we're just going to pick them and put them in our bowls here, and we're going to discard all the stems. I'm not going to go through and bore you with this, but we'll show you the end result, and I'll fast forward and show you what this is going to look like. Pretty easy if you just rub it in your hands like that. I don't know if that's going to work with these. They're really tightly bunched. <laughs> Is that why you wanted to do the purple ones? <laughs> See if, yeah, that might work a little bit, but don't get any of the stems in. That's no. for sure. Now, you're going to notice in this wine, we're not going to use tannins because the seeds are have tannins. These stems, any of those that fall in, it's going to have tannins. So no wine tannin is needed when you're making great wine. You're making wine, honey. <laughs> is this fun? Oh, yeah. She loves doing this. She's a lot faster at it than I was. She did like most of them. <laughs> All right, there it is. That's the Chardonnay. Oh my gosh. And what's that one? Merlot. Merlot. We got 12 pounds of each. Remember, we're making a three gallon batch. We went with four pounds of grapes, which is a bolder wine. You could go with three pounds of grapes per gallon if you want it, but it won't be as what? Grapey? I don't think that's a word. <laughs> if less bold, we'll yeah. say. But we like our wine bold. We want to taste the grapes. That's why we went four pounds per gallon. Let's get to the next step. Now, we froze these grapes, and they're a little bit 
thick skins are starting to crack. You'll see the liquid at the bottom, but we just want to break these up just a little bit by just kind of mashing them with this masher. You do not want to put these in a juicer. You do not want to put in a blender. This is what you want to do. Just kind of break these skins up a little bit. We'll fast forward and I'll show you what I mean, but we're going to do this to each one of these. There you go. You can see we just cracked the skins on. My wife used her hands. That seemed to work a little better. All right, we're ready to get some of the additives in. We're starting with Camden tablets. Do not miss these. Whatever wine you're making, you need one per gallon. Since we got three gallon batches for the red and the white, we're putting three Camden tablets in each one of these. And you will also notice that I like to put stuff at the bottom of my bucket because if you have a mishap, you're not ruining your fruit. So that's why I do it this way. It'll all get stirred in within in the next few days. All right, the next ingredient you want to put in is yeast nutrient. We want a half a teaspoon for each gallon. So we're going to put three half teaspoons in each one of these buckets. This is just going to help your yeast bloom. Again, is it necessary? Maybe not, but it's going to give you a healthy yeast and it's going to make a healthy wine. All right, the next ingredient is pectic enzyme. You want a half a teaspoon per gallon. Again, three gallon batch, we want three half teaspoons in each one of these. All right, the next one, acid blend, is a must for any wine. It's just gonna add flavor and balance your acid. We want a half a teaspoon in for each gallon, so we're putting three in each one of these. Now remember, I'm gonna have the recipe for a one gallon, a three gallon, and a five gallon batch in the description. So you don't have to remember all this, just look in the description. All right, now the fun starts. We can get the grapes in these buckets. We got our mesh bags that have been sanitized and we rang them out a little bit to get as much sanitizer out as we can. But remember, sand, star sand is safe in its diluted form, which is what we did. So here we go. We're adding a mesh bag in each one of these. And then my wife is going to try and put <laughs> the grapes in here without spilling them. That should be fine. All right, here we go. It's time to add these grapes to see all that juice. And do you see how it's catching some of that pulp? That's what these bags are meant for. And if you have two people, this works great to hold so somebody can hold that mesh bag just like this. Oh, can't even see them on my tippy toes. All right, looks good. I'm just gonna let this one down and we'll do the other. Oh, if you could smell these here, here comes the Merlot. There we go. We got them in the bags. Now we're just going to seal these up and get to the next step. Go ahead, draw that up, hon. Usually you'll see me use a twist tie on these, but these bags are brand new. So I don't think we need it right now. The more use we get out of them, the more I'll probably put a twist tie in here. But that should be good. There's one down. Let's get to the other one. All right, I decided to go with the twist tie. I didn't like the hole that was in the top and these, these grapes are very tiny. So I just wanted to be sure nothing was coming out of the top. So I did put twist ties on there. So we got a sanitized measuring cup and we're just gonna divide this sugar water that we've let cool in the stove. And we're just gonna divide it up between these two. We'll do one in one and then one in the other. We just wanna get it equal. Again, usually you're not doing two batches like I am at the same time. So you won't have that problem. You can just dump it right in. All right, now we're just gonna add some water. This should come up to the three gallon mark on your thing. So you wanna do this very slowly. Take an ABV reading and then add more water. I know where this is gonna come up. It's probably gonna come up to about here for a three gallon batch to get to a 12 to 15% ABV. All right, so I did take a quick reading. It was like 30%, We're so we got a ways to go. We're gonna put more water in here. And like I said, do this very slowly. You don't wanna overshoot your mark. My mark 
is 12 to 15 percent ABV. All right, now remember, we got the chemicals or the additives in the bottom of this bucket. We want to stir those in a little bit at this point and get that sugar mixture mixed in. We don't want to just measure the water on the top. So we'll give this a stir and then we'll take our reading. All right, so here's the hydrometer. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a potential alcohol side right here. Mine starts about 20 to 30 there. So I'm shooting for this 12 to 15. So I will just slide this over and stick this in here and see where we're at. I can tell you we still got a ways to go. All right, that's still at 25%. Remember, I said it's going to come up to about here. I think that's what it's going to be. So we'll just keep adding water slowly. Now we added more water. I'm going to take my another hydrometer reading and see where we're at here. So put this in. You want to make sure you're looking at the right side here. And this is looks like it's 12 and a half to 13. That's perfect. And that's where I'm going to stop. All right, we're just giving these one final stir here. And then we're going to get these lids back on and get the airlocks on and we'll be back in 24 hours to add the yeast. Don't do that at this point. All right, we're ready to get our lids on. You want to sanitize these lids on the outside and the inside. So we're just going to do that and we'll get this around, especially around the airlock there. So there we go. We'll let that drip off and we'll do the other one. Let's get these on here on this bad spot. There we go. And we'll get these airlocks on, but you want to fill them halfway with water before we stick these in here. And put this one in here. And all this is doing right now is keeping oxygen out, but it will, as it ferments, you'll see this thing start to bubble. And here's the other one. So there we go. We got our two wines, right? Chardonnay and Merlot. Chardonnay and Merlot. I can't wait. 24 hours from now, we're going to add the yeast in here. Stay tuned for that. But man, I can't wait to try this, right? Yeah. It's going to be amazing. you got to watch this whole series because we're taking both of these wines from beginning, from grapes, directly to wine. I can't wait. All right. It's been 24 hours. It's time to get our Red Star yeast in here. So... What we want to do is I'm going to sanitize my paddle. You can see how this squirt bottle comes in handy. I love this thing. And then we're going to get these opened up. These yeast packs are good for a three to five gallon batch. You use a whole pack for each one. If you're only making like a one gallon batch, half a pack is plenty. So let me get these opened up. This one is... I don't know if you can see in here, but now all we're going to do is add the yeast in here right to this. We're not going to stir it in at this point. And I'm only going to add it where you see a little bit of liquid. That's it. We're not going to stir it, close it up, and we'll come back in 24 hours. Now, it's been 24 hours since we added the yeast. They're already bubbling, and we didn't even stir it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stir this, open these up, and hopefully see a little bit of foam in here. I'll get you a close-up here. So I'm just going to, I'll open them both at the same time. So you can see some of the foam in here, and that's normal after 24 hours. And you want to get oxygen in here in fermentation. So let's stir these up. This one is the Merlot. You can tell the darker color. And the other one is the Chardonnay. Now, as we stir this yeast in, we're letting oxygen in. You need to let oxygen in your wine for the first three to five days. But we're starting to get some foaming in this Chardonnay too, which is what you want. Stir it up. And I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to fast forward a lot of this stuff in the next couple days, but I'll try and get a shot each day. But the key is, if you see foam, it's working. If your airlock's bubbling, it's working. Just let it go. Don't rush this part. So we're bubbling pretty good today. You can see I added this type of airlock 
versus this one. Over here, you can see the bubble in a little bit. But I like this one because you really can see the activity in it. It's time to get these open and stirred. That's what you want right there, foam. All right, I don't want to make this video too long, so stay tuned for part two when we're going to finish this fermentation and get it racked into our carboys and start filtering and refining this wine. You don't want to miss part two. Put your lips on mine.